are with you guys as a communicator for the whole session. And um, we would like to start our session and we um, would like to notify you all that we are live on Facebook. And if anybody is willing to share, we are uh, very welcome to do that. And um, we would like to share some slides with you guys. Uh, so, so we all are here because of SFC. SFC was founded uh, in 2015 by Chirin Sherpa and the team. It is a platform for youth to learn, develop skills, and explore several opportunities. The main mission of SFC is to empower youth to strengthen their knowledge, skills, and to reach their full potential via uh, education, mentorship, leadership, seminars, health campaigns, awareness campaigns, presentations, virtual sessions, story sharing, and interaction programs. Uh, the main vision of Sherpa for Change is to envision a platform wherein youths and in, as indispensable change makers with various skills and opportunities to realize the future they want. Moving on, uh, since we are here as a program of SFC to lead, uh, SFC to lead, Masini, the lead itself defines um, a program or a new initiative where um, we tend to lead, encourage, and advocate for further development of every youth in every field they are right now. And we personally want to, um, we personally, the team of SFC want to create a bridge. Uh, we want to be a liaison for uh, bridging the gap between the leaders, senior personalities, and the youths who aspire to be like them every day. Um, it is a platform which encourages and engages youth in the intellectual and interactive learning environment so that we can see for the bright future of youths. And yeah, so these are some of the pictures um, which were clicked uh, with the, in previous uh, programs. So we, had, we have had many personalities from different sections. So these are some of the pictures moving on to other slides. We also have other pictures and yeah. Uh, moving on to our speaker's introduction. Today's speaker, we have Mr. Subhas Lutosov with us and he is working currently in, uh, as a software engineer at Facebook. He started his professional career by graduating from IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology in 2013. After graduation, he joined an early stage startup, Selfie Mobile, as the chief technology officer. After about three years working in Selfie Mobile, it was acquired by Opshow. He then worked at Opshow for about eight months as a software engineer. After Opshow, he joined Insighton as a senior mobile software engineer. He left Insighton last year to join Facebook, and he has been working as a software engineer at Facebook since then. And we, on the, I, on the behalf of whole SFC team, would like to heartily welcome you, sir. And we wish to learn a lot from you today. <laughs> uh, so you. moving on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have... Um, our moderator, the moderator of our session today is our gonna no, is gonna be none of other than but our founder of SFC, Sherpa for Change, Shering Sherpa. He is an MBA of uh, 2020 batch, and uh, he is from Ashland University, Ohio, USA, um, and he has specialized in business analytics, and he will be moderating the whole session and. Uh, Having said that, I will just leave the whole session to our moderator, Shirin Sherpa. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Uh, namaste, everybody. Uh, today, we are here for a very wonderful session. And uh, it's my pleasure to see a lot of wonderful personality, personalities from different uh, sectors and different industries and all my friends, brothers, and sisters. Uh, well, Facebook, uh, everybody knows about Facebook. Facebook uh, today is one of the world's, uh, you know, largest technology company. 
along with Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, and Google. So Facebook was initially started in 2004 uh, with Mark Zuckerberg and his fellow roommates and classmates uh, in 2004 from Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, moreover, entire session will be learning and hearing more from our speakers about today's program. So basically, uh, I have uh, divided the section into uh, four different segments. Uh, the first segment is it's going to be about story sharing, where our speaker will share his story based on his experience, his success journeys, and different challenges that he has faced till date. And secondly, we'll be talking about startup and entrepreneurship. He himself has led a lot of startup, and he himself is also an entrepreneur. So it's a great pleasure from him to hear about his, you know, a lot of uh, strategies, tips, te techniques, and you know, different different uh, inspirational messages to the youths and everybody now to this program related to startup and entrepreneurship. And uh, third, we'll be talking about software engineer. Since uh, he himself is an expertise in the software engineering background, we'll be hearing a lot about software engineering in terms of a different perspective. And uh, finally, we'll also have a question and answer round. So I request everybody uh, you know, to remain patient until the end with all of your question and answer. So we'll be taking all those questions at the very last. And I am really thankful to everybody for your patience. Um, I had a pleasure meeting uh, Subhas Dai. I, I think it's comfortable for me to tell Dai and continue in the same way. So it was really a great time. Uh, like one year back, we started knowing each other and it was really uh, good to learn about him, like the way he handles his work and everything, his professionalism and everything. Uh, really inspired me a lot. And uh, today I'm like so glad to have him here as, a, as the speaker of our today's program. And uh, without wasting any more time, I'm already excited and I can't wait more to get it started. So shall we start it, Dai? Yeah, yeah, let's get started. And, and first of all, I wanna say thank you, Chirin and Dawa and the whole uh, Serpa for Change team for having me here. And I'm very, very happy to see that you guys are doing such a great work for inspiring the youth of today. Thank you so much, Dai. Really means a lot. And well, so first thing, uh, you know, everybody has a dream to work in a world's largest and so-called biggest, or let's say our dream, you know, workplace. And personally, I would love to do that for sure, but let's see how it goes in upcoming years. But then we have already a personality who is there in Facebook as a senior software engineer. So everyone here is excited to hear how you made that journey successful from Nepal coming to United States and finally you made it for Facebook. So the floor is yours, Dai. We all are excited to hear from you. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so I came to United States in about 2009 um, uh, for, for college. So I did my bachelor's here and immediately after, you know, I graduated in 2013. So after graduation, I, I joined a very uh, small startup, a seed level startup, which is basically a, a startup that was recently formed. Um, so I joined that startup as the first employee per se. Um, so there we were working on a mobile application for photography and, and social media. Uh, it was called Selfie. Um, so I worked there for about three years and in within three years we had about a million downloads for that application. Um, we, within that time frame, we also raised, uh, I think about 700 to $800,000 uh, in, in, in funding. Uh, so it was a pretty successful startup. Uh, at the end of three years, we were Acquired by another startup, so the whole team got um, uh, started working for that the bigger startup that acquired us. So I worked for that company. Uh, it was called Opso, um, and the purpose of of Opso to acquire us was that you know we had built some camera technology in our app, and they were very interested in in getting that technology. So. Um, so as part of that acquisition, I started working at Upshow and, and uh, worked on 
a different app for Upso using the same technology that we had built before. Mm -hmm. And after about a little less than a year um, at Upso, I, I joined another company, which was a slightly bigger company called Insighten as a senior um, IRS engineer. Um, so there I was working on, um, again, on, on iOS, but not on applications. It was more, more like on frameworks where, where other iOS engineers could use those frameworks to, to build apps. And after about, I think about two years there, I applied to Facebook um, and got accepted and have been working at Facebook since then. Actually, I, I, I didn't get selected on the first try, so I, I had to apply um, second time. So first time I, I couldn't be successful. And then on the second application, you know, uh, I was able to get in and been, been at Facebook for about a year now. Really awesome. So the very first day when you joined Facebook, of course, that was one of your dream workplace as well. So how did you feel on the very first day when you were able to make you know, the, your dream destination or let's say your dream workplace, how did you feel on the very first day? I was very, very excited um, on the first day, but uh, I was also nervous because Facebook is a very competitive workplace, right? Only, you know, the, the selection process for getting into Facebook is very rigorous and it's very hard to get in. Um, so as, as, because of that, you know, people, you know, who work at Facebook are very selected and, and you'll be working with the, the most brightest people in the world. Uh, so I was kind of nervous, uh, also excited at the same time. Really great. And uh, since you said like you made it at your second attempt, you know, everybody here is really interested to know what sort of changes you made on your second attempt that made you, or let's say that made Facebook hire you for, as a software engineer? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think there were, I think two types of changes I made. One was psychological, where, you know, when you're applying for Facebook, uh, you know, I think you need to have a mindset that, oh, you're capable, you, you can work there, um, so after the first interview, I made that psychological change. Um, um, during that time, after my first interview, I had also talked to some other people who used to work at Facebook, and they seemed to be more like me. You know, they, they didn't, you know, they were just normal people. Um, so so it, it kind of gave me comfort that, oh, you know, if, if so-and-so could work at Facebook, you know, I could also do the same. Um, the other things what I did was um, uh, some interview preparation. Uh, since the first time I had some experience, I, I had experience with the format of the interview, what type of questions will there be. So I did some preparation there um, and made up my mind. So, so psychologically, I was a little more stronger and, and more motivated too. Uh, well, the other thing I'd like to, you know, highlight over here is um, I have also received a lot of questions from the registration where participants were allowed to, you know, mention their questions and a lot of related questions were there. So, uh, what sort of challenge you faced uh, during your startup journey, the selfie mobile and opso and then inside and finally at Facebook, like what are the major challenges that you faced till date and uh, why you think like how how you think you overcome those challenges? Um, so, I think when I first joined Selfie Mobile, uh, one of the major challenges I faced was that I was just out of college uh, without much experience in the real world, and I was in charge of building an app that was going to be downloaded by thousands of people and, and be used everywhere around the world. Uh, 
and and the application was about you know you know taking selfies and and making people be allowing allowing people to be more creative taking selfies so it had to do a lot with camera and and all that so technologically it was a much uh, challenging project and also in terms of the audience it, it has it had a pretty big audience um, so with with no experience in outside of world i i had to figure everything out myself i, I didn't have a mentor to go to um, or I didn't have anybody where I could say, oh, how, how do I solve this problem, right? So, so just being the only engineer in the first phase of that startup was pretty challenging. Also, uh, working at a startup is always a you know, fast moving environment where you have to make changes really, really fast. You have to sip things very fast. You have to um, you know, do things that are not just on your comfort zone. You have to, you know, work with various different technologies that you're not familiar with. So balancing all that was pretty challenging. Uh, actually, I did have to work pretty long hours during those times to be able to figure things out and, and, and solve those technical challenges. But as time went on, you know, I, I became more experienced and, and it started getting um, easier and easier. At the later part of, you know, once the startup was established, you know, with, with some products, we, we hired some other engineers, then there were some new challenges of, you know, managing those engineers and, and working together with them. Um, um, but yeah, as, as time went on, you know, I kept learning and I kept figuring out those things. Um, uh, but that's, that's one thing that I always appreciate uh, right now because, um, you know, because where I'm right now is all because of those challenges I faced and then the hard work I put in during those times um, that made me, um, you know, stronger as, as an engineer, you know, made me tackle problems easily, not, not be hesitant to, to tackle any new problems or into jump into any, anything that is not familiar to me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, everybody is, you know, really proud of you. Uh, as a Nepali brother, as our senior brother, you know, you have done really great job and you have achieved like at your you know peak that's what i should say and uh finally on the very first section i would also you know want to highlight what made you interest in the field of information technology like did you uh, really had some kind of uh you know inspiration from your families friends or how did you get inspired into this information technology field um yes so basically if I, I was interested in computers and softwares from, from my school days. Um, so I, I knew I wanted to do something with engineering, um, but I wasn't sure I wanted to be a software engineer or a hardware engineer or, or any, any of that sort. So I started studying computer engineering in college, which I enjoyed. And during college, I, I had no idea that in future I was going to be a mobile engineer. So what happened was, I think it was in my final year of college, I took this one class um, called mobile app development and it was mobile app development on iPhone devices. And it was so fun. You know, I also had an iPhone at that time and it was, I just built a simple mobile app and then I was able to run it on my device right away. And I was able to play with it and I was able to change how it looks and things like that. And the fact that I was able to do something and see the result right away made me very, very motivated to, 
to pursue my career in, in mobile software engineering. Um, and after that, I, I started, you know, watching videos, uh, taking some, some courses. I actually took uh, a free course offered by Stanford University uh, on iPhone app development and just started building the apps that I wanted to build um, and gained experiences um, that way. Well, like uh, the moment you shared, like uh, learning about the mobile app development, creating some app that turned out to be whatever you wanted to and that inspired you every day sounds like you were, you know, burned to be an IT expert and which you are right now. And I think it's a very good moment for you and everybody of us. We are really proud uh, to have you here now to this program. So with this, uh, we have uh, concluded the first part uh, where he was asked to share his story and different experience based on his work. So now moving onward, moving forward, uh, we'll be discussing about startup and entrepreneurship, which is a really interesting topic uh, to me and a lot of like everybody over here. Uh, personally, I'm also like very much interested in innovation and, you know, like always thinking in a different way, trying to connect the gaps and, uh, you know, whatever need is there to make a gap analysis and to see what sort of things can be done that can be a, an opportunity for a lot of other people and to our community and society and the whole nation itself. So since you already shared about your startup experience, uh, I uh, would like to uh, highlight when it comes to startup, what sort of advice you would like to, uh, you know, give or provide to all of our people over here and everybody who is watching us. Uh, because uh, every time when it comes to a startup, it's all about team and uh, based on your experience, what sort of diversity has to be there in the team? We would love to hear from you on that part. Um, yeah, definitely. So a startup is something, it's, I think a startup is a great thing. You know, every uh, big company that you think of, you know, started as like a small startup. So Facebook was a small startup back then, Google. Um, and, and you asked about team. Actually, a team is very, very valuable. Um, because, you know, when you're starting a company and when you're working on an idea, you just don't work on one aspect of the idea. You have to, you know, for example, if you're working on the software, you have to have a designer, you have to have, you know, a data engineer who can provide some data, you have to have a software engineer. Um, but sometimes you won't get all those people. Uh, so you will have to wear different hats and, and you know, be, uh, you know, those different people yourself. Uh, but in terms of team, it's very important to have a diverse set of views uh, of people with who think differently. So if you have a team of just people who think in the same way, there is nobody to challenge your idea. Um, one very important thing in a startup is that, you know, you should always be challenging yourself and always be pushing yourself why you're doing this. Uh, is this make sense? Um, is this going to be successful or not? And, and to test that rigorously, you need people who are constantly challenging, oh no, this is not gonna work because of this, this, this. And you fix those issues and come back with a new solution. And then people will challenge again saying, oh, this will not work. And you know, because of this, this, this and you fix those. So those iterations are very, very important to solidify your idea. So if you have people with diverse set of views, diverse set of backgrounds, they can see your idea from very different perspectives and constantly challenge you on, on your execution. And eventually that will help you build a you know, better product, better company, and eventually be successful. Yeah, totally agreed. And uh, moving forward, I would like to add something related to entrepreneurship here. Uh, everyone uh, here in our group, they are doing a lot of different things in their own field, and 
everyone is amazingly doing, you know, different, different projects in different, different fields. Uh, when it comes to the mindset of being an entrepreneur, I would uh, love to, you know, just uh, for an instance, I'd love to add the, uh, you know, example or of Zoom itself. Since we are using that platform, uh, well, talking about Zoom, uh, it was uh, initiated or let's say founded by Eric Yuan, who was first hired by Cisco WebEx, which was another virtual platform before Zoom. Uh, but then he worked at Cisco WebEx for a couple of years, and uh, he figured out like certain different things he can add up that can you know uh, provide much much more value to customers or let's say the clients. And he then started Zoom after quitting the WebEx, Cisco WebEx. So do you think like someone has to work in such a way that he or she is trying to figure out what sort of things are missing in the present organization uh, in order to come out a new initiative? Or what sort of things you think like should have, like an individual should have as a, as a mindset to be an entrepreneur? Um, yeah, definitely if you worked in an organization where you were working on certain type of problem, like an example you gave for Zoom, you know, that definitely gives you a background knowledge on the product that you are going to build. So, so the Zoom founder probably thought that, you know, some features on Cisco were not, you know, good for, for general public and, and he optimized and created because he already had that background. But that is not necessary. Um, you know, for example, the first startup I worked uh, Selfie Mobile, it was actually founded by two brothers who were musicians. Uh, they had no idea about, uh, you know, building software. They had no idea about building mobile apps. But it was, it was the desire to solve a problem uh, uh, that, that made them, you know, found that company. Um, so not necessarily an experience, but one thing you need to have is, is, is a problem that you want to solve. There needs to be some problem that you are interested about solving and, and you should actually be very passionate about solving that problem. Um, and, and number two, in any experience you have, you don't need, so if you're solving a software problem, that doesn't mean you need an experience in software because as a startup, you're always going to bring people and build a team, right? So, so any field you, you are in, that's, that's fine. You can, you can always bring in your perspective and, and, and work towards that problem. I still remember at, uh, at Selfie Mobile, uh, our founders would, apply some of the logic they learned while creating music uh, and, and bring that logic to, um, to while building some of our features in the app. And, and it worked beautifully, you know, so, so any experience you have would be beneficial. The only thing that is required is, is your passion and your dedication. Well, uh, definitely like connecting the dots, you know, the, all the relative field is really important. And uh, everyone is, even myself, I'm trying my best to, you know, link whatever I can up to so that that helps me in my innovation process. Uh, since you're working on, working for Facebook, uh, can we expect uh, to have some, you know, amazing innovation in a couple of years from you? targeted to Nepal or anything else? Well, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely. I, in Facebook, I currently work at the pages manager team. So I work on the pages manager um, iPhone application. Uh, we definitely take feedback from users and apply. Uh, but one great thing about working at Facebook is you can come up with your own ideas, uh, you know, you can own something at Facebook. So you can, you know, come up with an idea to build a feature uh, and back that up with data. 
and you can actually build it and prove that that feature works. So you have that kind of autonomy. So there are some ideas that I, I want to work on and, and there are some things that I want to bring to the table as well. Well, like we all are really excited to, you know, uh, look forward for your awesome ideas. And we hope like we'll be, we'll be seeing that very soon. Uh, well, uh, again, like coming back to the point of, you know, entrepreneurship, what sort of suggestions you have for the youths and all the youngsters and all the people, especially from Nepal and all over the world who are really trying hard uh, on their ideas, what sort of advice you have for them to bring those ideas into reality? Yeah. Um, so the biggest suggestion I can give is don't give up. So startup is very hard and, you know, to, to begin. So you come up with an, you know, idea, you start working on it. After a few months, you realize, oh, it's not really working. It's not, you know, becoming what I hoped it to be. But the most challenging part is sticking to your idea and continue working even uh, through the down periods where, where it feels like everything is going in the opposite direction and it's not going to be successful. Um, that's one thing because I've seen a lot of people, a lot of startups fail because the founders gave up earlier than, than, and didn't keep pushing on the idea. The second thing is be able to change uh, your product pretty quickly. So, um, you know, you, you think of an idea today while you're working on it, few months later, you realize that it's the problem you're trying to solve is not being solved by this solution. You need to change slightly or maybe drastically to a different direction. So you should be able to just scrap what you did and be able to change direction constantly. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to change what you're doing. That's the second thing. Because when we're working for so long, we, we might get attached to it and, and we might have some sort of a relation with the solution that we're building and we, we may not want to change. That's, that's actually pretty hard to change. So that's, that's another thing um, that's important. Um, other thing I would say is, is hard work is in any field, in any uh, profession is always needed and especially if you're building a startup uh, you need to put on the work you know if, if you think that you're gonna build a company and uh, but I'm just gonna relax and have other people do the work that's actually not gonna work you have to put in the work yourself um, and, and have to be passionate at some level about what you're doing oh uh, well Totally agreed again. Uh, trying to wrap up this second part as well, you know, I personally am really excited to hear, uh, since you work for Facebook, I wanted to know if you had a privilege to meet uh, the founder of Facebook, Mr. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, if, if that happened, then could you please share your experience, like uh, how inspiring he is there as the boss of Facebook, you know, your crazy experience about seeing him for the first time. Like, I'm really excited to hear on that part. Yeah, definitely. I, I haven't met Mark on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but uh, every week um, we have these uh, company meetings where Mark comes and talks to all the employees. Um, so, you know, I've seen him in, in, in one room, single room, but uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. But if I do, yeah, I'll definitely be sharing sharing my experiences and, and thanking him for building Facebook and yeah. Right, like what would be your first, uh, you know, first thing when you see him in person or let's say one-on-one, -on -one, you know, 
what would what would be the first thing you would do? I'm just curious to know about that. I would. I think <laughs> I think I would just be grateful to him for you know for for building um, such a huge platform, um, and and I would definitely asking his his advice on what he thinks that made Facebook successful uh, as opposed to so many other social media platforms failed over the years. For example, there was MySpace, High Five, and other social media platforms that started around the same time. But Facebook has taken its heights and is one of the biggest companies in the world, but those other companies are just dead now. So uh, basically I would, like to get his insights and his views on what made Facebook become what it is right now and, and what made it different from other social media platforms. Well, that's, that's going to be a very interesting thing to hear about for sure, you know, in upcoming days. I'd be definitely being in touch with you for that. Uh, having said this, uh, we have uh, almost like concluded the second part uh, where we discussed about startup and entrepreneurship. Uh, there are so many things to discuss, but then we also need to consider the time of all our respected people over here today. And uh, now I would love to move on to our third section where we are talking about software engineering, uh, his expertise. That's the main thing we are talking about today. And a uh, lot of uh, participants have mentioned about career thing with Facebook and you know in the IT field. So I'm going to relate those things in this section as well. And again, like we also do have the question and answer round. So I, I am sure and confident that a lot of questions will be coming and I'm looking forward for that. But please have patience until we conclude this software engineering part. Uh, well, uh, could you just explain like what's your major role at Facebook being a software, let's say senior software engineer, what's your major role on Facebook? So my, my role, uh, like I said before, I work on the pages manager app the iphone uh, application for pages manager um, so my role as a software engineer in general at facebook is um, basically building um, building whatever features that that we're planning to release um, 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 what that's um, it, in Facebook, it's actually a software engineer has a much broader role. So to start a software, as a software engineer, I, I have the flexibility to discuss, you know, the requirements with other um, members of the team, like designers, um, data scientists, and all of the people and come up with a solution that is potentially going to help Facebook or help its consumers. And once you come up with an idea, and software engineer is heavily involved in those discussion and in idea generation. And once that idea is generated, um, you know, I worked on that, work on that feature, um, you know, and, and test that feature with testers and other people and have it released to the public. Um, and we also, once we release, we do some testing to see uh, what's going on and you know, if it is uh, received positively or negatively uh, and do sort of things and, and iterate upon that based on the feedback of users on those features and things like that. Yeah, uh, well, uh, the other thing I would love to relate over here is uh, focusing on the Nepalese market since we have a majority of our participants from Nepal and uh, you yourself were there in Nepalese market since a long time and now uh, you are you know working for one of the top IT giant. Uh, based on your experience uh, from Nepal and then in the United States what sort of things you feel like uh, there is like some kind of missing gap or do you think like the software uh, development uh, process is getting better in Nepal. 
It's just because uh, companies over here, like corporates over here, spend billions of dollars to create a very good software, a very good system. So based on your experience, what sort of things you see when you compare the software uh, you know, development part in Nepal and then in US? Well, definitely US is one of the leading countries in the world in terms of, uh, of software and technical companies. Uh, in Nepal, it's just very small and, and very recently growing. But I do think there is a lot of talent in Nepal. Uh, I have actually worked with a few people from Nepal and, and they're very talented. And I think we, we have enough talent in Nepal. It's just that uh, in terms of resources that are available, um, the, the framework that is available is, is limited uh, for, uh, for engineers that are in Nepal. Um, also, you know, being an engineer in the US, you have uh, all these big companies here and all these resources that are available. And those may not be available in Nepal. Uh, but I think this is changing pretty quickly and, and it's getting better. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's not up to the level uh, of what we see in the U.S. Uh, that's true. And uh, I, I believe like we are doing, uh, even like Nepalese market is progressing every year, every day, uh, compared to, you know, past years. Uh, we are hopeful like we'll be able to see a lot of different technological innovation as well. And it's happening every day, that's for sure. Uh, cool. Well, let's talk about the skills, you know, as a software engineer, what sort of skills someone should have so that he or she can be a very successful software engineer? Um, so in terms of skill, basically, um, you will need to be able to solve a problem from, from a little different perspective. So as a software engineer, you're building a software that users are gonna use. Um, so when thinking about building that software, you have to think every single situation, scenario that software is gonna be used. So for example, when you're building an app that displays certain content, you have to be thinking, not just thinking about how do I display those content, you have to be thinking about oh, what do I do if there is no network connection, right? What do I display? You know, what, what do I do if the user gets a phone call while viewing some of the content, right? Every single scenario that could happen uh, for that software. So, uh, so for that, I think it requires you to think holistically in every single corner cases uh, as well. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, you would also need to be able to solve problems uh, in the most efficient way. Uh, so meaning, you know, if you're building a software uh, and you're basically solving, you know, doing some computations or calculations in that software, you need to be figure out how you can do those computations in the most shortest amount of time and using least amount of resources because you know the server and all those resources are limited and they cost money and also people want result pretty fast right so you need to think in a way how you can uh, you know solve those computational problems in the most effective way possible All right. Uh, the other thing I want to know from you is uh, regarding uh, the degree that someone must pursue to be a software engineer. At the same time, we have so many different online courses or certifications that allow someone to learn about software engineer. So based on your uh, personal and professional experience, uh, do you think uh, someone has, uh, you know, someone must have a degree or like someone can also, you know, just uh, go through the online courses and certifications and, you know, try for the software engineering part of the career. 
And just because uh, previously also you mentioned us about your startup, like where your two of your brothers were musicians and they came out with a, a concept of that selfie mobile app, if I'm not wrong. So what sort of, uh, you know, views you have on this part? So definitely the require, degree requirement is becoming less and less relevant. Um, so now I think even at, you know, big companies, you can apply and you can work as big technological companies, even if you don't have a degree. Um, so, so if you do some training, uh, online training, and if you know how to do stuff, how to build software, there is enough market out there that you will be able to do so. So I don't think degree will be uh, definitely required in this case. Still some, some companies still require a degree. So, you know, when you're going through the job application process, you will see a lot of companies requiring a bachelor's degree um, or a master's degree in some cases. Um, but that's becoming less and less. But having a degree definitely helps, but it's, it's definitely possible to, to get into software engineering without a degree and just by getting trainings and, and you know, learning yourself and all that. Uh, I think it's really good information for a lot of people over here who are really interested into this film. At the same time, I'd also love to hear from you, like what sort of platform, uh, you know, the early uh, youngsters, or let's say people who are just trying to begin the career, what sort of platform they can use to learn about software engineering or any sort of IT related courses online? Which one you uh, have, you know, as a least, uh, for the, as a recommendation for all of our people over here today? If you have any, uh, I, I would be glad to hear about it. Yeah, there are a lot of platforms. Um, I, I don't have experience, in-depth experience with, with one platform that I could recommend, uh, but some of the popular ones are Udemy, uh, Udacity. Um, those are the pretty popular ones. I actually took a course in Udacity um, when I was building an Android application and I wanted to learn more about Android and it was pretty helpful. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, blog posts that you can watch depending on what, what specialty you want to go into. There are some blogs that, that are related to that specialty and also a lot of videos on YouTube are also helpful. Uh, thank you for sharing that information. And uh, I'd also love, I'd also like to let everybody know that uh, we'll be sharing uh, his email address with all of you guys. So anyone has any confusions regarding software engineering career field, uh, you can take your time and write him a very nice email so that he can respond to you. Uh, at the same time, patience is really important. And I hope everybody does the same. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, how a fresh graduate someone who is like recently graduated youngsters or adult must think about you know pursuing the career based on your experience and since you have met a lot of different youths you have worked in you have worked in a very diverse environment before and now as well so what sort of challenge a recent graduate face and how they can overcome especially in terms of the career building process so one of the biggest challenges a recent graduate faces is, is a psychological challenge where, you know, a recent grad doesn't have much experience. So, so being able to, you know, not having the confidence, oh, I can, maybe I can do this, but not having a confidence to do something or, or go work on something or start a company or, you know, interview for some company. So, so that is one of the biggest challenges, I think. Uh, so, you know, to overcome that, I think every graduate should think that, you know, every other person who, who started, uh, you know, big companies or who, who became successful was well, just like you, just, you know, graduated with very small knowledge and gained experience along the way. Uh, so don't be scared to try new things. Don't be scared to 
to do things that you want to do or pursue a career that you want to pursue or apply for a job that you really want, um, just go for it. I, I think that's, that's the advice I would like to give. Uh, well, yeah, everybody should understand about that. And uh, I'm sure like we all are trying our best to make sure that we get the best for whatever we are trying hard and whatever we are expecting for. Uh, we are almost end of our major sessions that I have segmented for the first three, and we still have uh, the question and answer round. So last but not the least, uh, we have uh, people from different personalities here and many of them are interested to know about Nepalese career in Facebook. Like, do you know any other Nepalese who works for Facebook or are you the first? I think we would be uh, really happy to hear about that. At the same time, uh, what sort of career opportunities are there for Nepali, you know, Nepalese IT professionals uh, for Facebook or any other software engineering field or IT field? We'd love to hear from you on that part. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, so there are definitely a lot of other Nepalese people working at Facebook. Uh, when I joined Facebook last year, I was really happy to see that there was an internal Facebook group for, uh, for all Nepalese people who were working there. Uh, uh, and there was a significant number of, of other Nepalese co-workers. Um, I was also, you know, able to meet a uh, few of them um, face to face, uh, but, but I would love to meet more of them. But yeah, definitely there are a lot of people working at Facebook who are from Nepal. Um, uh, sorry, I, I, I kind of missed your second question. Can you repeat that? Uh, my second question was about uh, the opportunity, uh, especially from you know people or uh, let's say youths from um, Nepalese market what sort of career opportunities they might have uh, being in Nepal, you know, how they can try for top giants like Facebook? Um, yeah, definitely. It's a good question. I think a lot of, um, it depends on company. So some companies uh, have outsourced uh, some of their you know, technology to, to countries like India and in some cases Nepal as well. Um, but one of the things, for example, if you want to work at a big company, Facebook, Google, or, or Amazon, you know, then I think, you know, it depends on the requirement. If the requirement of the company is that you need to be on site, um, then those companies have offices all around the world. Um, probably not in Nepal, but they have offices in India, Singapore, London, you know, US. Um, so, you know, if you're able to, uh, you know, secure a visa to work in any of those places that will give you an opportunity. Uh, you can also look for companies that provide remote work and, uh, and allow remote work from Nepal. Um, I don't know which companies do that, but there might be some companies that, that allow, especially with, um, with the recent developments with COVID, a lot of companies are going remote and, and allowing a lot of employees to work remotely and, and may allow uh, you to work from Nepal. Uh, but you'll have to do some research on what companies will be able to do those. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your valuable information on that part. Uh, with this, uh, I have uh, ended up the major three sections of our today's session, and I am very much thankful uh, to Subhas Dai for sharing so many uh, information, very much valuable suggestions for every one of us. Uh, it's, it's a very, like, I'm really happy, and it's a good pleasure, a very, like, pleasure moment for me to have you as a speaker of our today's program. Uh, so moving on to the question and answer round, uh, now it's open for every one of you to ask your amazing questions, you know, curiosity or any sort of enthusiasm related to Facebook or his life, his story, anything. Uh, we have some time uh, dedicated for this part, so please feel free to ask your questions and I request my team to help me on this part.
we do have the chat sections if anyone wants to uh, you know orally ask uh, you can go ahead Uh, well, we have received a few questions on our chat box, so I'm going to read it, uh, whichever is a very related questions. Uh, some we, are, we might have already discussed about it, so I won't be touching on that part, but whichever is new and relative, I'll definitely uh, read it out so that everyone will learn about it as well. Uh, all right, Furva Serpa, he has mentioned about what's your opinion about Industry 4.0? Um, I'm not sure I understand uh, what is meant yeah. by Industry 4.0. Can you clarify? I'd love to hear from Mr. Furva Sherpa if you could explain your questions, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, sort it out, make it precise so that it's easy for uh, our Surva to explain on your questions. Please, Furva Sherpa, if you could explain, I'd be really glad. Uh, is Fruva still here? I'm just checking one more time. Uh, well, the moment you join back or you can just write in the chat box again if it's a hard time for you to talk or it's, if it's a little bit difficult situation, I can understand that part. Uh, moving on to the other question. Um, I have one question from Dawa Sherpa. She is asking about how you are going to help Nepal from your experience. I guess this question was from uh, Mandel, my bad. How are you uh, going a, to help Nepal from your experience here? That's definitely a good question. Um, so with, with my experience with entrepreneurship and, and working at, at uh, big companies, I, I do have some experience where I could you know, help um, engineers in, in my company to uh, you know, with their startup ideas or, or you know, or any, any software related um, things. Um, so one thing I, I am planning to, uh, or in the future want to do is have an accelerator um, or, or at least motivate someone to create an accelerator or, or an incubator uh, for startups. So an incubator is basically a place where startups can have an office space. Um, so when I was working at uh, Selfie Mobile, uh, we were part of an incubator. Um, so as part of an incubator, there are various startups. So I think there were about 200 startups in that incubator building. Um, and what happens there is that incubator holds offices for other key, um, key uh, partners, for example, investors, um, advertisers, other related companies have offices there who could help the startup. Um, and being part of that incubator helped us actually raise uh, that 600,000 uh, US dollar six, uh, you know, funding within three years. Uh, and, and having that sort of framework is very important. And, and uh, it's my dream actually to be able to, uh, you know, build that sort of incubator in Nepal and help the startup community in Nepal. Um, but we'll see how, how long it will take uh, and, and how it goes. Uh, definitely, Dai. We are also looking forward for that. And uh, the other question I have uh, over here is from Fur Zhang Sherpa. He's asking about uh, what is the current job market scenario of IT? I guess he's trying to relate more with the pre and post COVID situation of the job market. So could you please explain about how is the job market of IT these days? Um, yeah, it's any job market that is affected by COVID, uh, 
IT market has also been affected, but I think it's the least affected job market um, in that sense because uh, most of the jobs can be done remotely without having to be in, in a physical office. Um, and most of the jobs are actually required. You know, even if you're um, in a situation like this, you need to have, companies need to have softwares running, right? And so, so it is one of the least impacted in my opinion. Um, and, and the job market is just growing. It's, uh, it's, there are always new uh, softwares that are being built and, and it's a growing field. So it's, there is always um, uh, you know, some, a lot of demand in, in an IT field. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, well, a lot of like online platforms like e-commerce are really doing great after the COVID just because people are staying home and they are doing a lot of transactions and it's, we, we could see a, a way better growth compared to past years. And I think uh, the market is getting better in terms of IT, uh, but I'm not really aware about other fields. Yeah, um, again, uh, I would still uh, leave the floor for anybody who is interested to ask any questions. Yes, I, 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 okay. Hello? Yeah, please go ahead. Hello? Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'd request the technical team to unmute his sound, please. Please go ahead with your question, Mr. Lucky. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lucky, sir, uh, for inspiring us with your story. Uh, um, and yes, Sheba uh, for Change for conducting this, conducting this uh, event. Uh, my question, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I am I'm also a mobile developer. Uh, I've been working here uh, in Nepal uh, as a like cross-platform developer, uh, Android and iOS both uh, for about two years now. It's not much, but I just wanted to have uh, your suggestion on um, the freelance community of um, of in mobile section like mobile developing section like what what would you suggest for a freelance developer uh, uh, because i want to like uh, uh, work on my idea uh, but uh, for me i think uh, the nine to five job which is uh, what i'm doing right now is not like it's not um, it's not giving me enough time to work on my idea like i can basically say that so uh, I want to freelance and just try to manage. Uh, I'm thinking of managing uh, myself like that, uh, like freelancing and working on my idea. So my first question would be, um, uh, what suggestion would you uh, give uh, for uh, like um, new or like upcoming uh, freelancers? And uh, my second question would be, uh, if I if I have some idea and you uh, you also uh, talked about like uh, don't be afraid to switch the ideas into like uh, according to the market uh, like pivoting the idea and my question would be second question would be what how can we uh, verify that uh, the switch will be a good one like the verification of the idea so uh, yes thank you that's my question yeah, that's very good question, Lucky. Um, so on, on the first question, I think freelance is a very good idea. It does give you the flexibility to work, um, you know, work on your ideas or work on something else. Uh, one advice I'd give on freelance is to, f first of all, you have to find freelance opportunities, which is uh, you can do that by using, I think there are many platforms online where you can sign up and register to be a freelancer. Uh, if you have an existing network, utilize that network 
um, in, in getting projects. And when you get a project, be very uh, respectful to the project and the timeline and, and the quality of the project. So once you get a client, uh, you know, if you deliver uh, a really good product to the client and in timely manner and you communicate it very well and the client was very comfortable, that actually gives you a lot more referrals. So the client will know somebody else who has um, some other needs and will give you freelance opportunities that way and, and you'll have a good reputation. So, so be mindful of the timeline you communicate with, with the clients uh, and, and be mindful um, and, and make sure you deliver on the timeline. It's, it, it better you know, deliver early. So um, that's the suggestion I would give. Um, and eventually that will, that will help you get more clients and, and eventually that will also, you know, once you get more experience will also help you give some time on the sideline. On your second question, uh, how do you pivot from one idea to another and without knowing that your, you know, direction that your new direction is going to work? That's a very tricky thing to solve. Uh, and, and at, a, at a startup. But the things that will help you is when you were working on your idea on the first direction, you will have data and you will have uh, some analysis and you wouldn't arbitrarily switch, oh, I wanna go from A to B just randomly. You know, You will be making that decision based on what you learned so far. So you are in six months into a project, you learn that, oh, the feature we're building is not solving the core miss, you know, needs of our customers or our potential customers. We need to build feature B. And you will have, at that point, you will have the data to support that feature B will be a better solution. And definitely it's, not going to be a perfect um, thing. So for example, your, your feature B may not even work, right? But that will be the best assumption based on the data you have at that point. Uh, well, I think uh, the justifying answer for is both of the questions. Uh, we still uh, can take a couple more questions if anybody's interested. Uh, I still leave the floor. Yeah, please go ahead if someone is willing to ask any questions. Hello? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Subhas, sir, uh, I have a question that uh, I think you, you know you know that the Facebook announces Libra blockchain uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, how is it going to change um, the perspective of people using Facebook to do the payments and all, all ads and other other uh, services on Facebook will change the way the people are using Facebook right now? Uh, that's a good question. So, so just to clarify a few things, Libra is a... Um, you know, it was initiated by Facebook, but it's actually a separate organization, uh, which is supported by a group of companies uh, and not just Facebook. Facebook is one of the supporters. And there is Calibra, which, uh, which uh, Facebook is, uh, you know, I think the name had changed to Novi, which is a Facebook wallet, uh, a, a, a Libra wallet that Facebook is building. Uh, but it's definitely going to help uh, the benefit of this would be in terms of Facebook, it will help uh, consumers and small businesses. So for example, if you are a small business in Nepal, uh, you know, you will be easily able to take payments from, from your customers with, uh, you know, with their saved payment method on Facebook. Um, you would, and that way, uh, with with very minimum fees because it's it's a cryptocurrency and and the fees will be less than you know what banks charge at this point uh, so it will help in terms of uh, commerce applications uh, 
I think. Um, um, but we'll, we'll have to see, Libra is very highly, uh, you know, it, it has to pass some of the regulatory hurdles, uh, you know, a lot of government agencies and, and um, you know, uh, all that need to approve uh, Libra and, and there are a few hurdles that it needs to pass before it gets to uh, execution. Uh, but it should change the way people do commerce, people do business, where they can easily use uh, an app or a platform they're already using to also uh, do shopping and buy things and create, uh, create an online store and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my second question is uh, uh, the React, React and React Native that Facebook has made, uh, how long is it going to stay in the market? And uh, would it be beneficial for newcomers to use those frameworks uh, along with blockchain technology to develop uh, new applications for uh, Nepali market? Um, yeah, definitely. So um, that's a good question. So I don't know how long React or React Native will stay, uh, but I think as um, you know, as engineers, we can judge by popularity. So React and React Native are pretty popular. So I'm assuming they will stay for a pretty long time. Um, and you said using blockchain. So I think for any questions like that, what I would say is, if you are solving a problem that requires use of blockchains, yeah, go ahead. Because I think blockchain is going to be, uh, you know, a technological advancement uh, that is, you know, always going forward. And I think blockchain, there are a lot of applications that are gonna be built on blockchain. So if you have some ideas about you know, about blockchain and you know, build something on blockchain, I think it's a great idea. And I think uh, it's, it's a great thing that you should pursue. Thank you, sir. Sure. Yep, thank you for your participation. And uh, we are almost uh, at the very end, but again, I'd like to leave the floor for at least one or two more questions if anybody is again willing to ask. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Subhasar. I'm Lakba. And I do have one question for you. Uh, I wanted to know what kind of programming languages are used in Facebook in overall. And what programming language do you use as a software engineer? Um, as a software engineer, so as an iOS engineer, I have used um, Objective-C and Swift. Uh, I've also used Java, React, React Native um, um, in, in various projects. At Facebook, we use all various, face, uh, Facebook is a huge project, right? So there are so many different teams and we basically use every single technology out there at Facebook. So there isn't something that you know, that it's just specific language that Facebook uses. Um, for me, I mostly do Objective-C at Facebook. Um, yeah. And uh, my another question is, while you were applying for Facebook, what kind of stages do you had to go through? Like what were the application processes? Can you explain it in detail? Yeah, definitely. Um, so there was three states, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. um, First stage is, uh, you know, if actually first, first of all, you have to apply uh, and then you need to be selected based on your resume. And if you are selected, um, the recruiter will, will contact you. And once the recruiter contacts, you'll go through, um, you know, a sort of like the first phase of interview, which is just a screening process. Um, and once you pass the screening process, you'll go through the second phase um, where it's, it's going to be an interview, online interview, where you know, an engineer from Facebook will interview you. 
Um, if you pass that phase, you will go to the third round of uh, interview, which will be on site. Uh, and you will go to Facebook office and do an interview for the whole day. Basically, uh, with COVID, I think the third phase is also online right now. Uh, but the, that's the general idea, at least for software engineers, um, or at least for me, that was that was the process. Uh, okay. And in the interview, do they ask some like technical questions, or do we have to give some kind of exam? Um, or it's just like general interview. It's there are different rounds in the interview. So there will be a technical round, uh, behavior round, and things like that. So based on based on what positions you're applying, they they will be asking you questions. If you're applying for a technical role, yeah, there will definitely be a technical interview. Oh, okay, and uh, I also do have another question. Uh, sure. How do you find the office environment in Facebook? Because I've heard many rumors that even in large companies, like uh, there are some kind of politics. So how do you find the office environment there? Yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, politics is a problem in, in some companies, uh, but Facebook is very welcoming and I, I would say free of those kind of things. Uh, one thing I really like about Facebook is the freedom it gives its, um, its employees. Mm -hmm. So for example, as an employee at Facebook, I have a lot of freedom to come up with what products I want to work on, what ideas I want to bring to Facebook. Um, uh, and, and, you know, as a software engineer, I have the freedom to work on an idea from beginning to the end. Um, and, and I think very few companies give employees that level of freedom. Uh, a lot of companies are top down where, you know, ideas are come from the top level and push down to the employees at the bottom and, and you just work on it. But, but at Facebook is, is a little different. Mm, okay. And how is the work life balance there then? It's, it's great. So I have, um, a great work-life balance. I was actually on, uh, I'm actually on paternity leave right now. It's Facebook gave me about four months of paternity leave after my son was born. Oh, okay. um, so it's an amazing work-life balance. Um, oh, nice. So thank you so much, sir, for answering my questions. Thank you no so problem. much. Thank you for your participation, Lakpa. And uh, Maybe we can go for one more question yes. if anybody's interested. Uh, one or two more. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, hello, Sebastian. Sir. Um, I have this like a small question. I just wanted to ask you, like, what kind of leadership, uh, what kind of leadership style do you find most motivating? Is working as a software engineer, and how do you handle your stress? You know, working as a software engineer, you know, you must have like deadlines and everything. So, how do you cope with all that? Yeah. So, the leadership style that I find most motivated is something, um, you know, something of a, a doer. So, so at Facebook, we have. Uh, great leaders who show by example, right? So some, somebody who, who does something and inspires their juniors to do something. Um, so, so, um, so leading by example is something that I, I get inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, what was the second question? So as working as a software engineer, you must have a lot of deadline. Uh, like, you know, how do you cope up with your stress? Oh, stress, yeah. Yeah, there are definitely stress at any company. There is, um, you know, some level of stress. Um, uh, for me personally, the way I think of stress is when there is a lot of things to do on my plate. I just uh, divide the work into smaller chunks that I can achieve. Uh, and I, I keep count of, you know, what things I achieved uh, at the end of the day. Uh, one thing that has helped me greatly is actually making, uh, you know, uh, a things a list of things that I want to do tomorrow and the night before. 
uh, especially when I'm working on a very, you know, large project and there are so many things to do, just creating a list of few things that I'm going to tackle tomorrow, the night before, the day before, uh, have helped me to stay focused the next day and, and you know, achieve more and be more efficient. Great, thank you. Sure. Well, anybody else for the very last questions, I guess? Uh, I could see Purva again asking another question. What are the good foundation certification to get for a student completing his master's? Maybe he's trying to relate into software engineering, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and I think you're trying to relate to software engineering here. Um, hello? Dear, Am I or I hello? Am I or uh, please go Am ahead. I yeah, you're audible. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so like I'm completely uh, like currently I'm doing my master's and in my master's like they are teaching us a lot of stuff like ERP systems, data analytics and as a student it's very overwhelming like and my question is like what is a good, my background is in computer networking and IT security and right now I'm studying IT so it's like there are a lot of interesting stuff but I'm confused like what is the good path after I complete my master's. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that it's very common to have that sort of dilemma. But uh, what you have to look for is what you're most, you know, you're getting so many different knowledge and, you know, you're learning so many different things. Just think of what you're most interested in and, and be really good at it. I think if you're doing data analytics, networking and all kind of stuff, you know, think of one aspect that you think uh, you are good at and you are interested at and uh, and look for opportunities where you can get further not you know education or certification in that particular field um, so i don't know i don't think i have any recommendation for a specific certificate that you should get but in general you should follow that guideline Uh, well, thank you everybody for your wonderful participation. As I mentioned before, our team, Serpa for Change team will uh, share Subhas sir detail with everybody so that in the meantime, if you have any, you know, sort of technical questions or any questions related to your career or project, uh, it might take some time for him since he is like really busy with his projects, but uh, we are hopeful that he will, you know, respond to you guys whenever he gets chance. So. If you are not able to ask your questions today, that's completely fine. So the moment you have some kind of dilemma, some kind of confusions, uh, you are, uh, you know, free to reach out. And uh, I'd also like to ask permissions before I, you know, say this out to everybody from here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Sounds Feel free really to reach out. Yeah. Love to hear, hear your questions, if any. Yep. Uh, Finally, we have uh, almost concluded our today's virtual session. Uh, well, today we have like a majority of participants from Nepal. Uh, I am here from Ohio and uh, Subhasar is from California. We have like different time zones, but still we made it. And I think, uh, and I'm thankful to all my team members for this great uh, job. And last but not the least, uh, before concluding, uh, we have some notes from our program coordinator, but. I'd love to hear from Subhas that I like, how was your feeling and how did you feel about our today's session? This is great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks Chiring and the entire Serpa for Change team for having me here. It was an amazing experience to hear your questions, to share my experience. Uh, and I'm so glad that, you know, you guys are doing this sort of programs where you're inspiring the youths to, um, you know, to get inspired by, by, you know, seniors or, you know, and ask questions and things like that. I think this is really good and this is gonna help a lot of people. Uh, definitely, Dai, of course, like we are very much pleased to have you and your, we really thank you for your valuable time. I think it was really productive for all the participants of our today's program and, uh, 
I did my part and I think uh, we touched a lot of different uh, topics, various different ideas, perspective uh, from a senior software engineer from Facebook. Uh, now I would love to leave this floor to our program coordinator, Ms. Chiring Sherpa. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sang. Hello, everyone. Namaste, Tashidile. My name is Sring Yangji Sherpa, and I'm currently the program coordinator of Sherpa for Change. Uh, we have almost come at the end of our session, and uh, at, at the last, we always appreciate our speaker. So I would like to take this time uh, to thank and appreciate our speaker on behalf of all the Sherpa for Change team and all the um, participants. Uh, thank you so much, Sir, for giving us your time, you know, sharing your story and experience um, on becoming a software engineer, your life experience. It was really wonderful uh, to get uh, life tips, uh, especially for youth uh, like us who's trying to do something in life. You know, it's really motivating for us. And this one hour session was really fruitful for me. And I believe it was same for all our participants as well. And for several for change, um, this is our first virtual session, SFC to lead a virtual session. We have been doing this before the lockdown, but this is our first virtual several for change um, uh, SFC to lead program. And since I'm from an uh, adventure tourism background, this is really interesting subject for me and where I had really less knowledge about, you know, software development and software field. Uh, it was really great knowing um, what it is like working, uh, you, like to know about your story as working as a software engineer. And we are really proud of you as well, um, Nepal Bada. Like you, you have like gone through a lot, you know, your life story. It was really, it's really inspiring. And I would also like to thank all our wonderful participants for being so awesome, uh, for participating, for asking questions, being so patient. Um, and as well as I would also like to thank our Modi, Raider, Mr. Srinkar Sang Sherpa for, uh, for your awesome, uh, for hosting this program awesomely and Ms. Yangla Sherpa as well. And I also like to thank um, all my Sherpa for Change entire team. And I also like to thank Mr. Sunam Zangu Sherpa who is behind the scene, you know, or working on all the technology, you know, um, streaming live in Facebook. He's working behind the scene. Thank you so much, Sunam. And yes, Sherpa for Change, if I have to uh, conclude this program, um, we are bringing more programs in future. And like, if you guys, any, you know, if you guys want any programs related to any kind of uh, field or any kind of uh, topic, please let us know. We have, you guys can mail us uh, Sherpa for Change at Gmail. You guys can, we also have Facebook. You guys can, you know, add us up and you guys can, um, see what programs are coming next and we also have instagram twitter facebook and youtube as well you guys can follow us and recently we have came up with a awareness um program uh covid awareness program um it's a video you guys can see it in your in youtube and in our facebook page as well and you guys can share it among your um family friends and since it's a awareness video and yes Lot. Last but not the least, um, I would like to thank Mr. Subhas, um, Subhas for his time. Thank you so much, sir. It's a pleasure having you here in our program, and we hope to, um, you know, we hope to bring more programs with you in future and hear about your story with Mr. Um, Mark Zuckerberg. If you meet him, you know, to listen to your story as well. And I'll, I would end this um, program, you know, uh, with a, a short quote one of my friends, I remember him telling it that like, don't wait for the inspiration, be the inspiration. So as Mrs. Subhas Ludo has told us, like, you know, keep learning, don't give up, um, keep creating, believe in yourself and stay positive. You know, it's really hard for everyone, but you know, the main thing is like not to give up in your life and keep working hard and, you know, keep creating and especially love yourself. Uh, yes, and we have come at the end of our program. Uh, if you guys have anything, please um, feel free to ask and please feel free to uh, mail us. And we'll be sharing this in Facebook as well. If you guys have your friends missed out this program, please um, uh, tell your friends that we will be posting this in Facebook and YouTube as well. So yes, thank you so much, everyone.
All right, before leaving, I think uh, everyone is requesting for a group picture. So I'd love to request my technical team to do that as a screenshot or, you know, however you want to do that. Okay. Try from my side. Oh, it's working.